Hello, so I'm going to be covering in this video everything there is to know about growing strawberries hydroponically indoors and a lot of these practices can apply to outdoors as well. I've been growing hydroponically for the last couple of years and this is actually my second indoor hydroponic strawberry tent. So I have a lot of experience with this cultivar and I've cloned this from one mother I grew from seed over 200 times. So regardless if you have a short day, long day, or a day neutral strawberry, that'd be a June bearing or an ever bearing strawberry are typically known as long day. And June bearing are typically known as short day. Long day, short day, or day neutral, they flower below 80 degrees. When we grow them indoors hydroponically, we can keep them in a state where they always believe it's the same time of year. And with no dormancy though, it'll shorten their lifespan from about five to six years to only a couple of years. You can give them dormancy if you want to. I am not going to choose to because I'll just replace them with fresh clones. They're super easy to clone and we're going to be talking about that. I like to start them in rock wool cubes. After 9 to 12 days, their roots usually stick out and you usually get 100% success. And I'll show clips and videos of the mother and a lot of my clones that I've created. If it sounds like I'm rushing, it's only because I want the plants in the content and the tent is getting warmer. It's currently 81 degrees in here. So they will still flower even though it is above 80 degrees right now and that may be a question you have is will ever bearing still flower in the summertime twice a crop where June bearing is only one crop and that's because ever bearing can endure slightly hotter temperatures where June bearing might stop flowering around like 76 or 75 where ever bearing is more long day and can endure a little hotter temperatures and will set flowers at night when the temperatures drop. So I hope that answers that, but regardless when you grow them indoors hydroponically, I give them always less than 80 degrees. Your light schedule will be based on if they're short day, long day, or day neutral. Day neutral doesn't care what light schedule it gets. Long day is anything above 12 hours, up to 16, you could even go up to 24 with some varieties. <clears throat> and short day is anything below 12, down to like 8 or 6. These are full spectrum grow lights, depending on what great lights you use. Everything I talk about is actually listed down below on my kit. I do affiliate for it on Amazon, so any purchases directly help out the channel and I greatly appreciate it. When you grow strawberries, you want to make sure you space them out correctly. In the past, I put eight in one bucket. There's currently only one in each of these buckets. Each bucket is a square foot. So they're about 12 inches apart and I can slide them a little further in this tent apart. I'll show a clip of the crowns closer up, but strawberries are really good at cloning themselves. So they will also produce several crowns. You can have up to four to six crowns. I'm not going to have more than probably four because the tent will get overcrowded. There's still one plant and another way they clone themselves is through runners. They'll shoot out these long chains and that's how I actually created out all of these. And depending on the cultivar you have, some are super runner heavy and some are not very runner heavy. When growing strawberries from seed, I grew mine from one in my fridge. So I don't actually know what the cultivar is, but I've learned over the last two years they flower under shorter, colder days. So they're probably a June bearing. I got them from California and like 92% of their strawberries are Chandler. So it's a, I believe it's a Chandler. However, the best way to save seeds from your strawberries and grow them from seed would be to cut a little bit of the strawberry off, let it dry out overnight, and then you can rub the seeds off the top of them and you can plant them right away. Or I skip cold stratifying. You could cold stratify them. I keep them dry and put them in the fridge and I'll cold stratify them, but I'll start some seeds in cubes. Usually the cubes work and I don't have to go back to the fridge and grab more seeds. Sometimes I do. I started white strawberry, raspberry, blueberry, blackberry, and another tent and yellow strawberry. 
and a bunch more of lettuces in an 8x8 tent in a separate video. And there's great companion planting you can do with strawberries because something like lettuce is a long day and will never flower under a short day. So I have it planted next to short day strawberries. So the short day strawberries will flower and the lettuce will never flower. We're at about the 47 day point. I watered these at the five week point. I started them at 1.5 EC. That's because strawberry clones are a little more mature than seedlings and seedlings I usually start at one EC. When they flower, I bring them up to 2.1 to 2.5 EC. When I watered them, I only was able to bring them up to about 1.8 EC. I watered them at the five week point because the Rockwell cubes start to dry out a little bit at the top because strawberries do not drink a lot of water. So it only had lowered to about this point after five weeks. And I know from experience in growing them in the past that I am able to fill the bucket up with a little bit more nutrient water and the roots will still grow very deep with strawberries because they have roots that grow very deep naturally. So you don't have to train them too low in the bucket um, <clears throat> by like training the water lower. But you could let the water drain lower in the bucket before watering them at the five week point. I did a five week update video, but I personally like to water them at that five week point just to get the Rockwell cube at the top re-moist and add more nutrients. I'm gonna be showing clips of me starting this tent and what it looked like and the work going into it. You don't need to grow in buckets. You can grow in other food grade containers. I just recommend the black buckets because no light will get in and to keep the buckets in about 78 degrees so that the temperature inside the bucket does not create any bad bacteria. I don't grow with Cracky, but I see a lot of my audience does, so I want to experiment with it. I'm using um, deep water culture, so bubbles are going into the bottom of the bucket. You can use air stones as well. This just makes it so that uh, the environment is moving and it ensures that there's always oxygen for the roots of the plant. Cracky relies on water going lower in the bucket for the roots to get oxygen. There's obviously oxygen in water, but sometimes not enough for plants. So I don't do it for a lot of my plants, like my trees, I worry about um, the oxygen levels in the bucket over time since they don't drink a lot. And I just like the bubbles for extra measure and it can actually help get bigger, whiter roots. Um, but both methods work very well and I've seen both me methods work very, very well. So. I also use HydroGuard that helps get bigger, wider roots. And regardless of what nutrient bundle you use, I highly recommend HydroGuard because it prevents root rot, cures root rot, and turns dead organic matter into stuff your plants can compose, decompose. And like I was saying, it promotes bigger, wider roots. The nutrient bundle I use is VegBloom Dirty specifically because the pH comes out to about 6 to 6.3 when I use it with my reverse osmosis filtered water. I use Life Plus, Bloom Shine, and Stackwell. VegBloom also has RO Soft and Tap Hard. I was accidentally sent the wrong bottle of Tap Hard when I bought Dirty, and I've been using Dirty for the last three years, and I just decided to experiment with Tap Hard. And it's not tap water, because I use my reverse osmosis filtered system, but I added it to the water and it brought the pH down to 4.3 which I don't think is sustainable long term since I do not change the reservoirs in any of my hydroponic plant buckets even in my three year plants and I know that uh, people have a lot of questions about changing reservoirs. I believe that as long as you keep the environment sterile and moving and the pH is balanced correctly and I don't add any pH up or down because my pH always comes out to exactly what I would like which is about 6. You want about 5.5 to 6 pH for most hydroponic plants and the EC about 1 for seedlings, 1.5 when they get a little larger and then 2.1 to 2.5 when they're flowering.
I'm going to show clips of me pruning my strawberry plants because I want to show you guys as much as possible. These are not done flowering and haven't produced any strawberries yet. I've had a bunch of strawberry plants in the past produce some strawberries, but they actually went out of flower because I wasn't controlling the environment as much. And they're June bearing, so when it gets too hot and the days are too long, which we're moving into the summertime, they stop flowering. So the way I get the environment down to below 80 degrees is with an 8,000 BTU air conditioner. It's a 5,300 BTU seasonally adjusted air conditioner. And I live in the desert, so it's very hot here. And it gets up to 120 degrees outside. And the alleyway is between my house and my neighbor's house has the central air for both of our homes. So it gets very hot in the alleyway and it's tough for this air conditioner to keep the temperature lower. When you're cool a space, you usually want to do 20 BTU per square foot. I like to do five to 10 times that, so 100 BTU to 200 BTU per square foot. This is 50 square feet, and I have trouble getting it down to temperature as is, and it's only about 80 to 90 degrees outside right now. We're not in the full summer yet. So I worry about being able to get them down to temperature as we move into 110 degrees outside. However, one of my commenters informed me that I can remove the unit from the top of these lights because they unscrew and have long cables. And I can dangle them outside of the tent and that will help reduce heat. So the tent should have an easier time staying colder. You can pick off your flowers to let the plant vegetate and foliate more or choose not to have them cold the first six weeks so that they don't flower and they're more vigorous and give them longer days and then cut them to shorter days and colder days when you want them to flower because once you have them in a short cold environment they will always flower so without providing a period of dormancy like I was saying that'll shorten their lifespan so even if it's a June bearing strawberry, it can be ever bearing when you keep it in an ever bearing environment. They just call ever bearing ever bearing because it does two crops per season and can endure longer days. And day neutral can also be ever bearing. Regardless, generally the rule of thumb is below 80 degrees and they'll flower and you can keep them in a state of flowering forever and it will shorten their lifespan. Let's see if there's anything I can think of. The tent is starting to get hot so I don't want to be in here too long but I still want the plants and the content. Let me review the footage and see how I did and if there's anything I want to add. So I'm giving these 8 hours of light. I could go all the way up to 11, anything below 12, but I just want to make sure I give them enough uh, darkness to make them think it's a certain time of year, just because it might get a little warm sometimes. It's at 84 right now. So I'm going to be clipping to me setting up this tent from start to finish and narrating a little bit in case there's anything I forgot thus far. So thank you for watching this far. And I appreciate you. I just got to turn the air conditioner back on or it's going to get too hot in here. And then beginning to lose my train of thought. I get a lot of questions about how much electricity does it pull. It's about $1.70 per day. I figured this out by the lights I use are 150 watts each. The air conditioner pulls about 300 watts. The air filter and the pumps are maybe about 100 at most. That's 8,000 for 8 hours, 5,000 for 16 hours, 13,000 combined. Divide that by 24, about 540 watts on average. And that's about 14 cents per kilowatt, which is $1.70 per day. I don't necessarily do this to try and save money, I just genuinely enjoy growing plants and a lot of this equipment lasts forever. Once strawberries start producing flowers, they're never going to stop producing flowers until I make them stop. And I'm not going to make them stop until they reach the end of their lifespan. 
and you get strawberries off them every day. So I can't wait to show you guys harvest I get from this tent because I should be getting handfuls every day for several years. And to me, there's nothing better than fresh food from home. Also, strawberries, the sugars in them turn to starch when they're picked. So the ones you get from the store will never taste as good as the ones from your plants. I didn't talk about the inline air filter I use. I use a six inch inline fan. I'm gonna be covering that all in a separate video on how to set up your hydroponic grow space from start to finish. And I just put out a vlog of me setting up my 8x8 tent where we cover a lot of the same information. Also, I cover a whole lot in my hydroponic plants playlist here on YouTube. I think this video is getting a little long, so I'll put out a separate vlog of me just building and setting up this tent from start to finish, likely when these flower and have berries on them so it looks better. Also, it will be a little more of a relaxed style video where this was mostly educational. I really want to help you guys grow strawberries as much as possible, so leave any questions you have down below. I take hours to respond to everyone as genuine genuinely as possible on as many platforms as possible. I greatly appreciate all the support. Thank you for watching.